Now, he was a world-class boxer who narrowly missed out on winning a world title not once, but three times. But Henry Wharton remained a firm favourite among fans until his retirement at the age of 29. Now, Henry from York is telling all about those days with the release of his life story. It's called Henry's Dream, which is also the title of a Yorkshire television documentary. And that's about one of the biggest nights of his career back in 1994. We'll be talking to Henry in just a moment. But first, Lisa Adlam's been taking a look into the archives. Fascinating stuff, isn't it? It is. Few were able to put the Dark Destroyer on the canvas, but Henry Wharton took Nigel Benn to the wire in their super middleweight clash on an electrifying February night in 1994. Henry, Henry, Henry! Roared on by a huge Yorkshire contingent at Earl's Court in London, many believed the 26-year-old from York had done enough to take the world title, only for Benn to retain his crown on points but he always acknowledged it had been one of the hardest fights of his career. 25 hours a day, I'm thinking, Nigel Ben, you know, World Championship fight. Yorkshire Television's cameras were with Wharton every step of the way as he trained and prepared for that first world title bid and following his family back home in York as they too prepared for the momentous night, which may have ended in defeat, but with his head held high. It's a, it's a feat for me just going 12 rounds and I've been, you know, fighting for the World Championship. I never showed myself up. Yeah. I'm a proud person. You know, I've been the distance for the champion. Two more bids for that elusive belt were also lost on points to Chris Eubank and Robin Reed before Wharton's retirement at the age of 29. He was reunited with his old foe Ben in 2012, this time for the official opening of Henry's Gym in York, where now a new generation of boxers are learning from one of the sport's greats. And here is uh, Henry now. Uh, it took you a while to agree to the book. I mean, are, are you happy with the result? Can't believe how well it's gone. It would take in 12 months overall, and uh, it's fantastic. The first chapter, the author read the first chapter back to me, and I swear, if it had said, how are you, I'd have cried. Really yeah. hard. Yeah, because, I mean, you were around at a great time in middleweight boxing. I mean, you fought Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank. It was an incredible time. Fantastic time. And I think uh, people go, you know, was you disappointed that you didn't win a world title? No, because I boxed. I, I still get plaudits today from because I fought so hard now. I tried really to win the world title. It'd been lovely, but the achievements I won apart from the world title, I was British Commonwealth and European champion. Uh, proud I've got of myself and for my trainers and my coaches helped me through that, them years. So I was a proud person anyway, but to win them titles, British Commonwealth for European, I would say there was enough for me because I wanted to be world champion, but there was great achievements. Mm, they were indeed. Now, the book talks about how you kind of started boxing. You were, you were from a travelling family, yeah. one of 11 children, and you were boxing by the age of 13, weren't you? By the age of 13, I took up boxing, and it was just like it was, it was meant to be for me. I know people say that all the time, but it really was. As soon as I went in a boxing club, it was, it was my football, mm. in football terms. And you talk of this kind of emptiness that you felt when it all came to an end. I think it's like anybody, when, when something like that, I mean, when you get to world title levels and title levels, you, <laughs> the phone never stops, your coaches are always on the, the phone to you. And then when you retire, you know, you train every day, suddenly you don't have to train every day. I played a lot of golf to get through it and I got asked a lot of times to come back. And I always said in my life that once I retire from this sport, because I was true to it, I always give 110%. I always said, when I retire, that's me done for life. And, and now, thankfully, I stuck to that. As we saw there, that you, you, you're training the next generation of champion boxers, including three of your own boys. Yeah, it's, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's given me the enthusiasm back. And yeah, I don't think you appreciate when you're boxing that you're taking all the knowledge in from all around the world. You don't look at it that, that stage in your life and say, this will be good when I'm a coach. Mm. You don't do that. Yeah. You just, it's all, you've got to be all self, self, self. And you don't forget it, it's in here. And hopefully now, one day, if they're fight for world titles, Ooh, very, very I can guide them. And yeah. I can give them that, maybe that missing link, and hopefully if they're fight for the world title, they won't lose like I did, they'll win. Well, all the very best uh, with both the book and, and with the gym as well. Let's hope it goes well. A pleasure, thank you. Thank you. Thanks very thank much. You. And we'll be adding that documentary about Henry Wharton. It's called Henry's Dream, and we filmed it 20 years ago to our website. Hopefully they're shortly at itv.com. 
forward slash calendar another chance to see it.